Tales of President John F. Kennedy's infidelities during his 10-year marriage to First Lady Jackie Kennedy circulated even before his death in 1963. In fact, throughout their marriage, both John and Jackie were known for engaging in extramarital relationships. From a brief liaison with Hollywood icon Marlene Dietrich to rumored affairs with Marilyn Monroe and relationships with White House secretaries, Kennedy's list of infidelities is notably extensive. Stay tuned as we explore the details of every woman the 35th President of the United States had an affair with. Judith Exner Judith Exner, a woman who played a pivotal role in connecting Kennedy and mobster Sam Giancana, stirred significant controversy when she claimed to have had an abortion after becoming pregnant with the president's child. In a 1988 interview with People, Exner, the daughter of a well-off architect, portrayed Kennedy as incredibly loving, concerned about her feelings, considerate, and gentle during their affair. Despite the clandestine nature of Kennedy's relationships, rumors and revelations circulated widely, and Exner's memoir, My Story, published in 1977, added another layer of intrigue to the public's understanding of Kennedy's personal life. Liz Smith, a longtime gossip columnist, extensively covered Exner's revelations and claimed that Jackie Kennedy was not entirely caught off guard by the information. Smith revealed that Jackie's close friends, including Truman Capote and Gore Vidal, indicated that she was well aware of Kennedy's affairs including the one with Judith Exner, and followed media coverage on the topic with keen interest. Judith Exner's life took a tragic turn when she succumbed to breast cancer at the age of 65 in 1999. Her story, filled with complexities and intertwining relationships, remains a fascinating chapter in the broader narrative of Kennedy's personal life and the intricate dynamics that defined his presidency. Mary Poncho Meyer in the intricate web of President John F. Kennedy's alleged affairs, the chapter involving Mary Poncho Meyer adds another layer of complexity. Before Kennedy's untimely death in 1963, he shared an affair with Meyer, who happened to be the sister-in-law of the renowned Washington Post editor Ben Bradley. The revelation of their relationship emerged when a four-page letter from Kennedy resurfaced in an online auction shedding light on the clandestine nature of their connection. In this rediscovered letter, Kennedy's words reveal a desire to break away from the constraints of suburban life, urging Meyer to visit him either at his residence, the Cape, or in Boston on the 19th. The letter captures a mix of longing and anticipation, with Kennedy expressing the irrationality of their liaison, but also the potential for shared moments that he imagines she might love. Kennedy's plea is poignant as he writes, You say that it is good for me not to get what I want. After all of these years, you should give me a more loving answer than that. Why don't you just say yes? This emotional plea hints at the complexity and intensity of their relationship, offering a glimpse into the personal side of the charismatic president. The narrative takes a tragic turn a year after Kennedy's assassination as Mary Pinchot Meyer met an untimely end in Georgetown, Washington. Her death, marked by unresolved circumstances, adds an air of mystery to the broader narrative, leaving questions unanswered and contributing to the enigma surrounding the lives of those connected to the charismatic and enigmatic President Kennedy. Mimi Alford In the mosaic of John F. Kennedy's alleged affairs, the account of White House intern Mimi Alford adds a personal and intimate dimension. Alford detailed her 18-month relationship with Kennedy in her revealing 2012 memoir, Once Upon a Secret, My Affair with John F. Kennedy and Its Aftermath. Alford emphasizes that Kennedy was not seeking a relationship to replace his marriage, framing their liaison as a complex interplay of emotions. The narrative unfolds when Alford, just 19 years old and only a few days into her new position at the White House, found herself entangled in a seductive encounter with the charismatic president. The rendezvous began innocently enough, with Kennedy inviting Alford for drinks and a private tour of the White House. 
However, the atmosphere shifted, and in what he ironically referred to as Mrs. Kennedy's room, the president made his move. This encounter, unfolding against the backdrop of the iconic White House, adds layers of complexity to the public persona of Kennedy, revealing a more intimate and private side. Alford's memoir provides a first-hand account of the dynamics at play during those 18 months, shedding light on the power dynamics and personal struggles within the intricate web of relationships surrounding the president. Her narrative contributes to the multifaceted portrayal of Kennedy, presenting a side that goes beyond the public figure, offering glimpses into the personal choices and complexities that marked his interactions with those in his inner circle. Blaze Star. Blaze Star, a celebrated stripper, unveiled her brief affair with John F. Kennedy, adding another intriguing chapter to the narrative of the 35th president's alleged liaisons. In a candid interview with People magazine in 1989, Starr revealed that she harbored hopes of continuing the affair once Kennedy ascended to the presidency. However, the unfolding Cuban Missile Crisis disrupted her plans for a rendezvous with the president in the Lincoln Room, marking an unexpected turn in their dalliance. The initial encounter between Starr and Kennedy transpired in 1954, when the future president, then a congressman, frequented her Maryland strip club, Crossroads. This unconventional meeting set the stage for a brief yet impactful connection between the two. In her 1989 interview, Starr painted a vivid picture of Kennedy, describing him as very quick and very wild. She emphasized his confident and experienced demeanor, noting that he knew exactly what he was doing with girls. Intriguingly, Starr added a light-hearted touch, stating that Kennedy's well-known back issues didn't hinder his abilities, asserting, no, that bad back didn't phase him. Starr's account provides a glimpse into the personal and perhaps unexpected aspects of Kennedy's life before the presidency. The interplay of their relationship against the backdrop of historical events, like the Cuban Missile Crisis, adds layers of complexity to the narrative, offering a nuanced perspective on the private life of one of America's most iconic leaders. Marlene Dietrich Marlene Dietrich, the legendary German actress, adds a captivating twist to the tapestry of alleged Kennedy affairs, with claims from her daughter, Maria Riva, that her mother had entanglements not only with patriarch Joe Kennedy, but also with his son, President John F. Kennedy, within the hallowed halls of the White House. According to Riva's account, Dietrich received an invitation to join the president for drinks in September 1963 during her visit to Washington, D.C., where she was performing a one-woman show. At the age of 60, Dietrich allegedly experienced a clumsy pass from Kennedy, who then cognizant of the ticking clock, remarked that they had limited time before her show commenced in 30 minutes. According to ABC News, Journal entries from Kenneth Tynan, submitted to The New Yorker, shed light on this one-time romp. As the narrative goes, Kennedy, displaying his trademark charm, quipped to Dietrich, I hope you aren't in a hurry. However, Dietrich, with a commitment awaiting her, responded that 2,000 Jews were waiting to give her a plaque at 7 p.m., and it was now 6.30. Undeterred by the ticking clock, Kennedy reportedly replied, that doesn't give us much time, does it? The encounter, as recounted by Dietrich to Tienen, concluded sweetly and very soon. The affair, encapsulated in a mere 20 minutes, saw Kennedy eventually drifting off to sleep. Dietrich, ever the punctual recipient of a plaque, had to rouse the president to guide her back to her car, ensuring she made it in time for the ceremony at 7 p.m. This brief liaison adds a nuanced anecdote to the tapestry of Kennedy's reported affairs, showcasing his ability to weave romance into even the most time-constrained situations. The rendezvous with Dietrich, as captured in Tienen's journal entries, offers a glimpse into the fleeting yet captivating moments of Kennedy's personal life. Pamela Turnure the intricate web of John F. Kennedy's romantic liaisons expands further with the inclusion of Pamela Turnure, 
rumored to have shared a brief romance with the president, as detailed in Larry J. Sabato's book, The Kennedy Half Century. Turnure, renowned for her striking resemblance to First Lady Jackie Kennedy, reportedly engaged in a clandestine affair with Kennedy that spanned two years, commencing in 1961 when she was just 21 years old. Intriguingly, Kennedy is believed to have played a role in Turnure's professional trajectory, advocating for her employment as Jackie's press secretary after she had previously served as his own secretary during his tenure as a senator. The dynamics of this purported affair add layers to the intricate relationships within the Kennedy circle, highlighting the president's alleged influence on professional appointments and the interconnected nature of personal and professional spheres. Priscilla Ware Amidst the tapestry of John F. Kennedy's rumored affairs, another thread emerges with the inclusion of White House staff member Priscilla Ware, affectionately nicknamed Fiddle. The alleged affair between Kennedy and Ware was not only a subject of speculation, but also caught the attention of none other than Jackie Kennedy herself. Reports suggest that Jackie, conversing in French with a Paris match reporter, pointedly remarked, This is the girl that's sleeping with my husband, referring to Ware. This revelation, shared by Kennedy press aide Barbara Gamarekian, adds a layer of complexity to the intricate dynamics within the Kennedy household. The nickname Fiddle persists in discussions about Ware's alleged involvement with Kennedy, as detailed in biographies penned by notable authors such as Larry Sabato and Seymour Hersh, Jill Cowan. Within the intricate tapestry of White House secrets, another intriguing figure emerges, Jill Cowan, a fellow secretary working alongside Priscilla Ware in the White House press office. While Cowan has maintained silence about her own relationship with President Kennedy, she has shared insights into his admiration for his wife, Jackie. According to Cowan, Kennedy took great pride in Jackie's meticulous record-keeping. She noted that the president was very proud of the fact Mrs. Kennedy had kept a book of all the place settings and pictures of the flowers, the whole sort of personal touches in the White House. This glimpse into Kennedy's personal life adds a layer of complexity to his public image, showcasing his appreciation for the details that made the White House a home. In the labyrinth of White House affairs, Cowan herself was given the nickname Faddle. Together with Priscilla Ware, they became collectively known as Fiddle and Faddle. This cryptic nomenclature only adds to the mystique surrounding the relationships within the Kennedy administration, where personal dynamics intertwined with the grandeur of political power. Gunilla von Post. Within the enigmatic pages of White House history, a chapter unfolds through the words of Swedish socialite Gunilla von Post. Her memoir, Love, Jack, claims a clandestine connection with President John F. Kennedy that spanned six years, commencing in 1953. Their first encounter occurred when Von Post, a 21-year-old Swede, and the 36-year-old Kennedy found themselves on the sun-kissed shores of the French Riviera. In the memoir, she vividly recounted the transformative moment. He turned and kissed me tenderly, and my breath was taken away. The brightness of the moon and stars made his eyes appear bluer than the ocean beneath us. The romance unfolded against the impending marriage of Kennedy to Jackie in a mere three weeks. Despite the imminent nuptials, Von Post and Kennedy maintained their connection. Two years later, they rendezvoused once more. In this meeting, Von Post alleges that Kennedy contemplated divorcing Jackie to be with her. However, the specter of scandal loomed large, and Kennedy, advised by his father, chose the path of political prudence, opting to preserve his marriage and burgeoning political career. Angie Dickinson In the intricate tapestry of Kennedy's alleged affairs, actress Angie Dickinson's story unfolds, with crooner Frank Sinatra serving as the unexpected link between her and John F. Kennedy. Their paths converged at a party hosted by Kennedy's sister Pat in Santa Monica, a fateful meeting preceding the 1960 Democratic Convention. Subsequently, Dickinson found herself drawn into the orbit of the presidential campaign. 
However, amid the political fervor, Dickinson's narrative takes an intimate turn. Author Jed Mercurio, in his novel American Adulterer, delves into Dickinson's perspective, where she reportedly expressed dissatisfaction with Kennedy's stamina in the bedroom. This revelation adds a nuanced layer to the complex dynamics between Kennedy and the woman who allegedly shared fleeting moments with the charismatic president, Dickinson's account. Interwoven with political intrigue and personal revelations, offers a glimpse into the multifaceted nature of Kennedy's relationships during a pivotal era in American history. Ellen Romech In the labyrinth of tales surrounding President John F. Kennedy's personal life, the enigmatic figure of Ellen Romech emerges as a captivating character. A 27-year-old German prostitute, Romech is rumored to have been deported under the directives of Robert Kennedy due to the potentially revealing stories she held about his brother's escapades. Adding a cinematic touch to the narrative, Romech, often likened to the iconic Elizabeth Taylor, is said to have graced the White House with her presence during naked pool parties in the spring of 1963. The whispers of those times suggest that her visits weren't merely social, rather she allegedly sought intimate encounters with the charismatic president on more than one occasion. The clandestine affairs and rumored escapades paint a vivid picture of a White House shrouded in secrecy and allure, where figures like Romech became ephemeral stars in the untold stories of Kennedy's personal life. As the threads of history weave through these accounts, Romech stands as a mysterious emblem in the intricate tapestry of Kennedy's alleged liaisons. Audrey Hepburn Delving further into the intricate tapestry of President John F. Kennedy's alleged romantic entanglements, another captivating figure surfaces in the form of the iconic Audrey Hepburn. In the biography, Jack and Jackie, Portrait of an American Marriage, by Christopher Anderson, a former White House secretary named Mary Gallagher, unveils a clandestine affair between Kennedy and the breakfast at Tiffany's Star. According to Gallagher, Audrey Hepburn possessed an intoxicating laugh, mirroring her on-screen persona, coupled with a distinctly sexy and naughty side that remained concealed from the public eye. The affair between Kennedy and Hepburn, as whispered behind closed doors, managed to evade the scrutinizing gaze of the press. The clandestine nature of their connection, far from diminishing its intensity, reportedly added an extra layer of allure and secrecy. As these narratives unfold, Audrey Hepburn becomes a mysterious muse in the intriguing saga of Kennedy's alleged romantic liaisons, offering a glimpse into the enigmatic aspects of the charismatic president's personal life. Jean Tierney In the intricate tapestry of President John F. Kennedy's alleged romantic involvements, a recurring motif emerges, a penchant for entanglements with Hollywood luminaries. Among these star-studded liaisons, one of the more illustrious dalliances was with the captivating Gina Tierney. The affair between Kennedy and Gina Tierney is said to have transpired around 1948, a period when Tierney was still entwined in the bonds of Mariagi. This rendezvous adds another layer of glamour and allure to Kennedy's romantic history as it intertwines with the golden era of Hollywood. As the narrative unfolds, Jean Tierney becomes a captivating figure in the intricate dance of love and secrecy that is said to have characterized Kennedy's romantic escapades. The dalliance with a celebrated actress from the silver screen introduces a cinematic flair to the complex tale of the 35th president's alleged affairs. Marilyn Monroe Marilyn Monroe, the iconic Hollywood actress, stands out as one of the most widely discussed figures in the realm of President John F. Kennedy's alleged affairs. Investigative reporter Seymour Hirsch delved into these speculations in his book The Dark Side of Camelot, where Monroe was named as one of Kennedy's mistresses. On the night of May 19, 1962, during a fundraising event and early celebration for President John F. Kennedy, Marilyn Monroe made a memorable entrance onto the Madison Square Garden stage. 
she gracefully shed her glamorous fur coat, revealing a skin-tight, rhinestone-encrusted gown, and approached the microphone. In her signature sultry yet oddly childlike voice, Monroe serenaded the president with the famous words, Happy Birthday, Mr. President, followed by the classic refrain, Happy Birthday to You. This alluring performance, laden with sensuality, intensified public speculation about a secret romantic connection between the Hollywood sex symbol and the commander-in-chief. Remarkably, this excursion did not include Kennedy's wife, Jackie. Monroe's captivating act became the fodder for years of intense speculation, fueled further by her untimely death just months after the event. In the aftermath, tabloids churned out reports filled with falsehoods and manipulated photos, contributing to the enduring mystique surrounding the rumored relationship between Monroe and President Kennedy. Imagining a romance between Marilyn Monroe and John F. Kennedy was undoubtedly enticing, considering they were among the world's most famous and attractive figures at the time. Rumors of the president's extramarital affairs were widespread, adding fuel to the speculation. However, when it comes to the alleged Monroe-Kennedy relationship, the truth appears to be scant, according to various sources, including historian Donald Spoto, the author of the 1993 book Marilyn Monroe, The Biography. Accounts suggest that Kennedy and Monroe had limited opportunities to encounter each other throughout their lives. In April 1957, both reportedly attended the April in Paris Ball at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel in New York City, but they did not meet. At the time, they were accompanied by their respective spouses, Monroe with playwright Arthur Miller and Kennedy, then the senator of Massachusetts with Jacqueline, and the event hosted over 1,000 people. In 1961, rumors circulated that Monroe and the newly elected president attended a dinner party at the Santa Monica home of actor Peter Lawford. Lawford's wife, Patricia Kennedy Lawford, Kennedy's sister, was a close friend of Monroe's. However, despite Kennedy's presence at Lawford's luncheon that day, there is no confirmation that Monroe was also in attendance, as reported by BuzzFeed. Historians suggest that the most plausible opportunity for an affair would have been on March 24, 1962. Monroe and Kennedy were believed to be at Bing Crosby's Palm Springs home for a party. In Donald Spotto's Marilyn Monroe, the biography, biographer Ralph Roberts, a close friend of Monroe, claimed that during a phone call with her that weekend, he heard what sounded like Kennedy's voice. Monroe had sought professional massage advice from Roberts, who mentioned that Kennedy, known for his back issues, even took the phone to speak with him directly. Susan Strasberg, an actress and close friend of Monroe, supported this account in her unpublished memoir. According to Susan, Marilyn enjoyed the secrecy and drama of a liaison with a charismatic president, considering it acceptable. However, Kennedy didn't fit the profile of the man Marilyn envisioned spending her life with, and she made that explicitly clear. If they were indeed together at Bing Crosby's home on the specified date, it's plausible that Kennedy might have asked Monroe to perform at his birthday celebration that very night. During that time, Monroe was working on the film Something's Got to Give and faced challenges with sinusitis and barbiturate dependence both of which contributed to delays in the movie schedule. She managed to fly to New York to honor her commitment to the president. However, the studio seized this pre-planned absence as a pretext to cancel the film, placing the blame on Monroe and initiating a lawsuit for breach of contract. In reality, the situation wasn't solely Monroe's fault, as she had previously requested the time off to attend the gala. The film was already facing setbacks due to frequent script rewrites. The birthday fundraiser marked the last documented occasion when Kennedy and Monroe might have intersected. Following her rendition of the supposedly scandalous Happy Birthday, Monroe transitioned into singing Thanks for the Memory, featuring lyrics she had penned specifically for the man of the hour. When Kennedy stepped up to express his gratitude, he remarked, I can now retire from politics after having had happy birthday sung to me in such a sweet, 
wholesome way. Following the event, the only existing photo of the two public figures together was captured by White House photographer Cecil Stoughton. This happened at a crowded after-party hosted at the residence of movie executive Arthur Krim. Interestingly, before her performance that night, Monroe was introduced as the late Marilyn Monroe, a playful reference to her frequent tardiness on film sets. In hindsight, this title takes on a poignant tone of foreshadowing. Less than three months later, on August 5, 1962, Marilyn was discovered dead from a barbiturate overdose in her Los Angeles home at the age of 36. While conspiracy theories persist, some involving the Kennedy family and an alleged cover-up, her death is widely accepted as either suicide or accidental. Exactly one year later, on November 22, 1963, President Kennedy was assassinated in Dallas, Texas, at the age of 46. As for their alleged affair, most accounts suggest it was more of a one-night stand. In contemporary times, if a sitting president were proven guilty of even half of what Kennedy was alleged to have been involved in, the media frenzy would likely devour them, resulting in a scandal that could significantly tarnish their reputation and credibility. However, Kennedy stood out uniquely as he managed to evoke unparalleled affection and loyalty from his team members and supporters. Despite the intricate logistics of his liaisons demanding secrecy and devotion, his warm personality and magnetic charisma served as his secret weapons. Kennedy was convinced that his amiable relationships with influential members of the press would act as a shield, protecting him from the exposure of the details of his love life to the public eye. Were you aware of the extent of Kennedy's romantic involvements? And did any revelations about the women mentioned in this video surprise you? Share your thoughts in the comments. Before you leave, take a moment to show us some support, enabling us to continue presenting you with fact-filled videos like this one. Give us a like and subscribe to our channel. While you're at it, hit the bell icon to receive notifications, ensuring you stay updated on our latest and upcoming videos without missing a beat. Stay tuned for more videos delving into the lives of your favorite stars, films, television shows, and notable figures of yesteryear. Bye for now.